Hello everyone, my name is Jochen. I'm a Cloud Native Consultant and partner at 56k Cloud in Switzerland. In this video today, I want to talk to you about how you can build multi-architectural Docker images with GitLab CI CD. I also wrote a blog post about the same topic, but as this is a bit outdated, you will get now a more um, up-to-date version in this video today. So why do you actually need to um, consider building images for multiple processor architectures. So with smartphones and also with the rise of IoT devices, um, you also have now ARM processors next to x86 processors. And this means that if you want to run your application or any, any process on those new processors, you need to build your application so that they can run on them. On top of that, and next to smartphones and IoT devices, in the last couple of years, ARM processors also made their way into the data centers, especially at hyperscalers, like you see here on the picture, especially the um, AWS Graviton processors. And in order to um, ensure that you can make use of those new um, processors, you need to make some changes to the way you build your application. And in this case, I talked to you how you can leverage Docker and the Docker command to make this happen. So the steps that you need to do is, first of all, if you wanna um, create um, container images, you have to write a Docker file. Then um, I show you how you can use make files to automate the steps. And I especially like to use make files because with them, you can run the same commands locally as you then can run later in the CI CD configuration. And this helps you especially with troubleshooting and testing your changes. And then the last part is I show you how you can or what you need to um, write in the CI CD configuration in order to make it happen or in order to make and push those images. So now let's jump into the code. And here I'm at one of our public um, repositories on GitLab. And in this um, repository, we have one um, Docker file. This Docker file consists of two, two um, tools. One is the AWS CLI that we need, and the other one is Terraform. And in this case, we needed to um, have a specific version for Terraform, so we couldn't use the latest. And that's why we have to, had to come up with, um, with this, this way. And this Docker file is built up. So on top, we have two, two variables that you pass into the Docker file. And then we have two, two run commands where we use the default um, commands um, out of Linux. And now you're wondering maybe, okay, why, why is there no ARM or x86 specific parts? And the reason for that is that for the default Linux repositories, um, the handling of using or downloading and installing the, the proper version or code for the proper architecture is done actually by, by Linux and you don't have to, to um, take care of that. Um, on the other hand, in our case, as we had to install a specific version that wasn't part of the repository, we had to do um, a workaround. And in this workaround, we use the wget command to download the file. So the URL and the file name, then we unzipped it and um, moved it into the, the proper location where it was actually needed. So that's uh, the Docker file. If you now jump back into the root folder, let's have a look at the make file. So in the make file, you see we have three variables on top. So the first one is the Terraform URL which points to a specific version of Terraform. And then we have two more um, variables, one for the x86 version and the other one for the ARM version. So you can see here, there are two separate um, packages, um, each um, application or architecture specific. Then further down, we have two, uh, three targets two for um, building and pushing the images to a container registry and then building the manifest. So the first two targets are built up um, quite simple. If you see, 
with the only change basically the um, specifier for the platform or for the processor architecture and then also the same for the variables that we pass um, over and then also for the the image tag so we have one image tag for the x86 and the other um, image tag for the arm version after you build and push the, the docker images you need to um, create a so-called manifest and there you can leverage the docker manifest command so where you can say docker manifest create you give it a name so you give it a um, image name and in this case the tag is um, not architecture specific and the last part is then an array of images that are part of this manifest after the creation of the manifest you push it also to the registry so that it shows up in the registry um, as multi-architecture and then whenever um, someone runs a docker pull command um, based on the information that is sent to the registry the registry can decide which image to return and as i said before the last part is then um, the CI/CD configuration and in here um, it's a bit simpler than what I um, had previously and what is pre um, described in the in the blog post because by now um, a lot of the tools um, were moved into into docker and so we don't need to install and configure um, additional things so the only thing we need to do here is yeah, log in to the registry. In our case, we logged into the Docker Hub, but you can also um, yeah, log in to ECR or the GCP uh, container registry. And then further down in the, in the job itself, so we have some variables. So one is the folder in which uh, we want to execute. Um, or one uh, from which we want to build the Docker image. Then we have the image uh, name that we want to use and the tag in this case, it's a simple tag with latest, but usually you should actually um, yeah, make really version specific tags in here. And then in the, in the script section, so we first um, call the two targets for building the two Docker images. And the last target is then to build and push the manifest. And this job is always executed whenever we make any changes to the AWS Docker folder. So whenever you ch change a file, add a file or whatever to that folder, actually this job will be triggered and it will push, uh, create and push the new images to the registry. So let's quickly recap what I showed to you. So I showed to you um, how you create, can create Docker images for multiple pro processor architectures, um, how you then can enable GitLab CI CD to build the images. So let the pipeline run whenever there are any changes to it. And the last part is how you can then also push those images to a container registry. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below or reach out to me via email, Twitter, or any other social media. Thanks.